Well, I guess the most important thing was it's uh, to deal with horses and cattle, but it's also a great family sport. It involves all the family, from the little ones, from, from little three and five year olds right up to 80 year old grandparents. And now that sport has a spiritual home, a $3 million complex the Acton family built at their property near Rockhampton, the aptly named Paradise Lagoons. I live and breathe the, the facility here and the camp drafting the cattle and the horses and the people that come with it. We want to bring take camp drafting to another level and make it into a more of a, of a spectator sport and have the facilities where spectators can come and enjoy looking at Australia's own sport in comfort, the same as they can when they go to the big race of racing events in Australia and uh, sporty, other sporting events. There's seating for up to a thousand spectators, kitchens, bars, and three floodlit all weather arenas. The brothers dedicated the whole thing to their late parents. Well, I guess, uh, you know, everybody loves their mum and dad, but they were wonderful community people and they loved horse sports, pony clubs, race meetings, camp drafts. Just uh, wonderful family people. And I just said to somebody last night, you know. I'd give a lot of money to be able to see them come back and just see what we've done there for them, you know, and they'd really be very proud of it, I'm sure. 5.26 Over the past six years, the complex and the competition has grown in stature and in prize money. This year, more than $200,000 was up for grabs making it the country's richest camp draft. Be gone. This is the daddy of them all. You gotta come here. It's an excellent place to be. It's now become a sort of an institution, a social event of the year. People come here that haven't got a snowball's open hill of winning, but they just want to be here and participate because it's such an event. This is a world-class facility. You won't see anything better than this in Australia. One of the biggest jobs is organising the livestock. In the lead-up, the Actons and their staff muster nearly 5,000 cattle from a range of their properties across Queensland and move them to Paradise Lagoons. The attention to detail with the stock is important so that every competitor gets a fair and equal crack at the big money. What I'm looking to try and do is to make it as fair and equal for everybody and that's why I spend so much time particularly drafting the cattle and making sure I get nice even lines so every competitor gets a fair and e equal opportunity. Hit up! Hit up! Hit up! Hit up! Hit up! Hit up! You might have thought that the drought, high fuel prices and horse flu might have put a dampener on numbers this year. But when nominations closed, there was a record 2,600 entries. It's an addiction, there's no doubt about it. It's a form of madness, I always say, because people I know, they'll drive for miles and miles and miles, and now the price of diesel, uh, but, and they, they don't do any good at all, and they go home and say they've had a great weekend. <laughs> and what would camp drafting be without a camp? Yeah, it's an awesome sight, all right, Pip, isn't it? Makes me feel very proud to think that uh, we've been able to do this for the camp drafting industry and set up a venue that, uh, that we can, as people say, you know, it's like uh, Royal Flemington. It's uh, the Flemington or the Melbourne Cup of camp drafting. Camp drafting is one of only three sports invented in Australia. The other two are Australian Rules footy and polo cross. Philip Kirkby's grandfather was at the first camp draft staged at Moree in northern New South Wales in 1890. He says the sport grew out of work on cattle stations. People saying my horse is better than yours, so let's prove it, and that's, what, that's how it started. And this is the gist. Horse and rider go into the camp, they cut an animal from the mob, work it in front of the judge, and when they're satisfied they've shown off their skills, the rider calls for the gates to be opened. Once they're out, the rider has 40 seconds to guide the beast around a figure of eight course and then through a gate.
Sometimes you'll see a beast running at a peg and it's going to go this way, going to go that way, and all of a sudden goes the wrong way. If it had gone the right way, it would have got an idea, and if it goes the wrong way, you get a nothing. It's all about guiding the beast through the gate, just like this. But sometimes it seems an impossible task. The animal just won't go where the rider wants it to. Even the best, like Queenslander Pete Comiskey, who's won 14 national titles, can be beaten by choosing a headstrong beast. It's like you don't really know what's going to happen every time you go in the yard. Most of it's a confidence type activity, you know, like sometimes if you have a bad run, you've just got to go back there and keep very positive with it all. And, um, yeah, it's, it's uh, sometimes a bit of luck of the draw too. You've got to draw that good steer, but then, of course, when you get him, you've got to do the right thing with him and put him right through. But when it all goes right, say in the hands of a champion camp drafter like Terry Hall, the crowd just loves it. The sport tests cow sense. The ability of both horse and rider to anticipate what a beast is thinking and where it's headed. They say Terry Hall has it in spades, as does his son Ben Hall. And so does Nebo Pete Comiskey. You could put him on anything and he'd be able to put it around. He's got the best judgment and I suppose he's been doing it for a lot of years. Yeah, he's really good. Put him on a donkey, even? Yes, <laughs> he'd be able to do that. <laughs> Paul Metcalf says he can't think of another elite sport where a no one from nowhere can step up and compete alongside the best in the country. You can be a rank outsider with a Toyota and a horse float and drive here with one horse and line up against camp next to somebody that maybe have 10 open horses here and you can compete in the same arena under the same con conditions with no restrictions or handicap or anything else. Fencing contractor Frank Courtney drove 700 kilometres to ride. And two months shy of his 80th birthday, he was one of the oldest competitors. What's it like on those days when everything goes right out there? It's real good. It's real good when everything goes right. <laughs> but uh, a lot of times, it'll it'll go wrong real quick and uh, in this in this sport you can be uh, uh, cock of the walk today and feather dust tomorrow it's just the way it is unfortunately for mr courtney he had a feather duster day for graham and evan acton the real reward for staging this event is watching the rookies and old hands the talents and the triers chasing their cattle around their arenas. Most of them just love the sport and the, the winning is a bonus. It's being part of the, the event and the competition and the comradeship with the, the people and that. Winning's very good, but it's only a very small part of, of, of life and it only lasts for a minute. Graham Acton had five horses booked for rides over the three days with mixed results. Sometimes he went close. Other times he didn't. You can have a really good two pegs and then your split second everything can change from really good to really bad. And I guess that's what keeps everybody coming back. It's a challenge to make it all happen. The cattle gave Evan Acton mixed results too. Are you two quite competitive? Yeah, yeah, we're very competitive both. Always have been from the days when I was back at boarding school in any sports and, and when we were in Pony Club we used to always be competing against one another in the flag races and barrel races and that, you know, it's sort of just been part of our life. He says they're proud of what they've built. Total strangers, like there's a lot of people you don't know here and they'll shake your hand and just say, Jesus, it's a, a great weekend and pleased to be here. And thank us, you know, with all their heart for for putting it on for the general public. So, yeah, that's the way it is, so we are very proud of it. As word gets out about the facilities and the standard of competition here at Paradise Lagoons, the crowds are growing. Now, some people who wouldn't know a camp drafter from a draft horse are coming out for a look. Especially when word got around about a new event, a state of origin camp draft. The Reds, Queensland, versus the Blues, New South Wales.
It was hoped that with the sport's best coming out one after the other, the crowd would let loose some interstate rivalry. The competition was a big hit, with the Paradise Lagoon's cattle winning more often than not. And just like its rugby league namesake, Queensland took the honours. Ah, oh, absolutely marvellous. The greatest competition of beautiful red cattle, the same colours as Queensland colours. That was remarkable drafting, remarkable horsemanship and under the lights, fantastic. Will it be on again next year? It certainly will. So you'll It'll those... be on for the next hundred years. Can you give those blues a chance to win it back? <laughs> give them a the chance. They'll need to improve a bit. <laughs> The next day, it was time to get down to business and sort out who took the money home. The first big payday was an open event with $57,000 on the table. After two rounds, more than 600 horses had been whittled down to 42. Pete Comiskey, out on the course. Pete Comiskey, riding a horse that had twice been a runner-up here, beat Terry Hall by just four points. He's heading over to the gate. And thanks for well done there, Pete Kaminsky, and the freak response. Very, very happy. It's been a uh, great event, and um, obviously it's good to be in the lineup, but it's always better if you're at the top of it. And is it good to beat Mr. Hall? Oh, it's always a lifetime dream trying to beat Mr. Hall, you know, I've always been 38 years trying to do it. And uh, do you all hit the bar now? Oh, absolutely. I'll be there. Last mentally. But the biggie everyone wanted to win was the $70,000 draft. After two rounds, the field was reduced to 48 finalists. Quite a few made the gate, including Queensland cattleman Wally Ray, Ben Hall, Pete Comiskey a couple of times, and Victorian Ken Bolton. But it was the man in the black hat the modest Kingaroy farmer, Mark Buttsworth, who prevailed. Oh, well, these couple of boats beside me are always hard, but, yeah, there's, there's heaps that, you know, out of six or 700 horses, there's always, um, always probably dozens of them that can win, yeah. The Acton brothers were delighted with the turnout and the competition, and they're determined that their event will be a permanent fixture on the national camp draft calendar. I hope it keeps going and our, our uh, children and their children after them, I hope, you know, they keep the interest in it. Did you start with a little dream and it's just getting bigger or have you always imagined it would be like this? Yeah, I guess I have. I don't have too many small dreams. Most of my visions have been fairly big, I guess.